We've got two representatives here from Liverpool Football Club, Jurgen Klopp and Andy Robertson. Um, there are some mics around. If you'd like to ask a question, please uh, just put your hand up. We'll get the mic to you. Uh, identify yourself. And also, if we could get the questions for Andy first out of the way, because he needs to get ready for uh, some uh, training, <laughs> warm-ups, and, um, and then we can focus with uh, questions with Jürgen. And we'll try to keep the questions to uh, the matches at hand, please, as well. Thank you. Who would like to go first? Uh, hi, Andy. Uh, Marcus here from One Football. Um, just wanted to ask you about uh, what's it been like training with Darwin Nunes. Is there anything about him that stands out so far for you? Yeah, he's uh, tall, <laughs> um, but like he's obviously came in. We've we've not been back for too long, but we have to let him settle in, and he's looked good in training. And the Brazilian boys and everyone that speaks his language are helping him a lot. I don't think me and him have had many conversations yet. We've just kind of smiled at each other, but um, you know that will come. Um, but fantastic player. We played against them and made it really difficult for us defenders in the, the two games. And, you know, if he, he puts in the performances, then he'll be a really good player for us. Question to Andy. Go ahead. Uh, hi Andy, uh, obviously these trips are about training and the pre-season friendlies, but can you just talk about the camaraderie that's built up in the squad from these trips with the long journeys and all that, just because there's a few new players in this squad as well? Yeah, it's, um, you know, we're obviously in a hotel, we basically live together over this time, um, so we spend a lot a lot of time together, a lot of time with the, the coaches, a lot of time with all the staff and yeah, I think this is where the, the foundations for the, the start of the season start. Um, you know, this is where the hard work gets put in, where we try and find our fitness and our form again, and um, we we start laying out what we want to do during the season. So these these camps are so important. When we go to Austria, it will just be as important as well. And um, the amount of you know running and the amount of training we do is you know, it gets us to where we need to be for, for the first game of the season. Ours is obviously a bit quicker than everyone else's with the Community Shield coming up, but, you know, we'll be ready. We all, we didn't have that long off, especially the international boys, but we had a good enough time to switch off mentally, physically, and our bodies are feeling good, and it's just about getting up to speed now, and I'm sure we will be come, come the first game of the season. Yeah. Hi Andy, I'm Gabriel from ESPN. Um, obviously, you know, you come to a place like this, you see so many fans, you know, everywhere you go, you, you obviously know how big a club Liverpool is, but it's just still a bit surreal that wherever you go, even a place like this, a small country like Singapore, you guys are getting mobbed, you know, fans screaming your name, um, you know, and that it just, is that just what it means to play for a club like Liverpool and everywhere you go, you're, you're being adored and loved by fans? Yeah, I think the day you sign for Liverpool, you know you play for a big club. But when you come to these places, it just it just reminds you of how big you know the club actually is. You come to countries like this, and you know the fans are they're so welcoming of you, um, as if you know you're their heroes, and they're waiting outside the hotel. You know, come in the stadium, everywhere you go, um, they just want a glimpse of you. And, you know, we appreciate it massively. Um, you know, the fans all around the world are so important to us, not just the ones that get in Anfield every single week. And, um, yeah, it's so important that we give back to the fans, you know, small things like open training today and playing matches over, you know, the other side of the world, effectively. So it's nice to give them that back because their support's always appreciated. I know they get up at sometimes silly times to watch us games with time difference and things like that. So... Look, it's incredible the support we've received on this tour and I'm sure, you know, most countries we go to we get that. But it's been special and it's been it's been really nice to see and like I said, we don't take it for granted. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, hi, Andy. Laura from The Straits Times in Singapore here. Just now you mentioned about how um, pre-season is important for you guys to lay the foundations for the following season, right? So last season, we came really close to winning the quadruple. So is there an expectation this time to come to do that again? Or is there like added motivation or pressure because of that? I think, again, when you play with this club, there's always expectations on you. It's what we have to deal with. We've always had to do that. Um, and, you know, we have expectations of ourselves. We want to be the, the best versions individually and best versions as a team. I think last season, large parts, we showed that. Um, obviously, the end of the season didn't go the way we wanted to, but I think after time, we can look back on it and, you know, a lot of fond memories last season. And it also drives us forward for next season. We want the feeling of lifting trophies. We had that twice last season and two really good days out at Wembley. And we want that feeling again. But we know it takes a lot of hard work. We know it takes a lot of determination and everyone, you know, singing off the same hymn sheet effectively. And if we do that, then we believe we're there or thereabouts because we've got a fantastic team when we're at our best. And But we know as soon as we drop below that, then, um, you know, we won't achieve what we want to achieve. So that's what the plan is, to go for everything at 100%, like we've always done. And um, if we do that, we believe that gives us the best possible chance to, you know, to be successful. Andy, you left a, a heat wave in the UK. So when you came down to Asia, probably that wasn't such a big shock. But what about the humidity? How's that been affecting? Jürgen's having a bit of a laugh there. So <laughs> I guess it's been an issue. <laughs> Um, it's made training a little trickier, <laughs> um, especially the tougher sessions, but it's something that's part and parcel of, of football. You know, when you come over to these countries that it's different weather and being from Scotland, we don't, we're not quite used to that. <laughs> um, I'm very used to the rain, not quite the humidity, but like you said, it's a heat wave back in the UK just now. So hopefully when we get back, there's a, a little bit of rain, a little bit cooler. So it certainly makes it easier for training, but. Like I said, it's all part and parcel of it, training at different times, training in the dark, things like that. But, you know, it's warm all year round here, I think, and um, we've adapted well, and um, it, will, it will only help us, you know, training in that kind of heat will, will get us fitter quicker. Andy's uh, desperate to get out to training, so if anyone else, no, no other questions, we'll let him go. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the hot seat is all yours. Uh, questions for Jürgen, please. Uh, Hi, Jürgen. Nick from BBC here. Um, it's been about three years since you've done a trip like this, coming to the other side of the world. What is it that you've missed and perhaps not missed about doing these big pre-season tours? Three years. Where have we been? Three years ago. I forgot it. Was it was USA or was it Hong Kong? I don't know. Probably USA than the last one. Mm. So, no, this, this, these trips are, are really a wonderful, a wonderful thing. The only problem is you have to fly 14, 15 hours, and you you, you train in completely different times. Humidity is not is not exactly that, but we but we are used to it. So it's it's good and not so good. The best thing about it is we come closer to our fan base. So that's how it is to the fan base here in Asia, especially. We know how big it is and we know how important it is to come here and we really love doing it from a training point of view and then first and foremost I'm a coach and um, uh, it's not my favorite thing to do because um, if we can go two weeks to Austria and train twice a day, that would be better. Here we are, we have appearances and stuff like this. Very important and it's kind of like a preseason is for us, for, for a coach, is to create situation which we hopefully don't face during the year. So like tougher situations, like you train in the middle of the night pretty much when nobody's not ready, you, you train in, 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 in extreme heat. All this kind of thing. We will not face that in, in England, but it helps us anyway. So it's also from a sports point of view, it's, it's really um, helpful as well. Um, but the m most important thing is to come here and that the people see us, and not only on television, but live as well. We have today here, I heard now, 12,000 people for the open session, for open training session. That's uh, absolutely impressive. <laughs> um, that's really great. The only problem we have is a little bit, sometimes the people probably think he could sign on my shirt. That's true, I could. <laughs> 
the problem are the 500 people around, so and I don't have time for 500 people. And um, we try to do it as often and as much as possible, but it will not. We cannot satisfy everybody's wishes. That's a problem a little bit, but I hope um, that the people are happy anyway. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi you again, Jay from Goal here. Um, you used a whole host of players against uh, United in Bangkok. I think you had about three different 11s on the pitch over the course of the 90 minutes. Um, can we expect something similar tomorrow, or are you going to use a more fixed set of players? We might change a little bit, but just similar it will be a similar approach. Look, the thing is, do do I like losing against United 4-0? No, not at all. But we cannot um, judge our preseason because of one game. We have to we have to do what we have to do, and we we had obviously a longer season as United, so we had we had to play longer. Um, it was the most intense season I ever experienced, so we had to give the boys as long off as possible. It means the internationals came only back three days before we played Man United. If I let them play now 45 or 60 minutes, then I, somebody has to um, put me in front of uh, a court or whatever. That's like uh, that's not possible, and we have still to take care of that. But the boys have to train hard. That's what we do in between. Not sure. Yes, there was no open session, but um, the, the, the session here in, uh, was was pretty intense. And that's exactly uh, what we will do today again. We have to train really um, intense, hard, a lot to get the players in the right in the right um, in the right um, physical state for 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 the whole season. So um, preseason games um, are important, but the most important games are coming up in a in a few weeks, and that's when we have to be ready. So and for that, sometimes we have to suffer, and we all suffered. Well, four 0 is a, is a harsh result. We didn't like it, um, but it happened anyway. And now, let's see what we can do tomorrow against Crystal Palace. Yep. Hi again. Most Hi. of our rivals are strengthening this season. Uh, how do you rate your chances this coming season? Our rivals are what? Can you just repeat that? Sorry. Most of the rivals are, are strengthening their squad. Oh. So, how do you rate your chances this season? That happens every year. So that happens every year. So our chances in, in in the specific games against our rivals, whoever it will be, I I, I figured out we have around about nineteen. Um, and they always do that. We try to do it as well. Um, and yeah, I don't I don't think we have our chances are worse than last year or, or massively better than last year. Not at all. It's just look, we we play now for a while consistently on a pretty high level. It's really difficult to do, to be honest. It's not that we just think um, you know, now we will be good again. So winning a Premier League game is the most difficult thing I've experienced in my life, and I do the job already for a while. Um, and so that's what we try to prepare for, that we are ready for Fulham and then for all the others in the, in the league. And of course, before that, we play Man City, try to be ready for that as well. Um, but really, that we, that we respect all the opponents in the Premier League. And... Um, it's really difficult. Nothing, nothing to do with what who they who they um, signed or who came in and stuff like this. The good news is, in the end, they only can line up eleven. So and we have the same number, and then let's give it a go. So that's what we try. We can improve, and we have to, and we want to, and that's what we are working on. And then we could or can be again. This that's our aim. This one team, nobody wants to play against. And um, if we can be that, then a good chance to win. Some football games. Yeah. Hey, coach. Uh, so, Hill from Goal here. Um, you've been quoted in 2016 saying that you were strongly against the idea of signing individual players for around 100 million. Obviously, now you've signed Nunes. How exci a hugely exciting player for new for nearly 100 million euros, um, including add-ons. How much has the market changed in years since you first made that comment? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Obviously, a lot. These kind of things happen. The numbers are not right, you're telling, but it's not a problem. I know which numbers going around in the world um, <laughs> out there. Um, when you want to sign a striker um, of the as, as exciting as Darwin is, this is the market, and you have to then you have to 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 pay the price. How I said it's not a price you mentioned, but not the price is going around, but there's no problem. Um, but it, uh, I said I said so many things in my life and life caught me then later and, 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 and showed me uh, that my imagination was obviously not, not clear enough. That's how it is. Um, after that, we bought a 
we bought a center half for quite a decent fee. We bought a goalie for quite a decent fee. That's how it. That's how it is. Our situation is always the same. Um, we we try to to level it somehow. The things we invest and the things and the boys and, and and the players we sell that it's kind of not that it's got not going out of any kind of um, range and um, that worked so far. But um, I know I know I heard it immediately. I, I forgot it obviously that I said this, but everybody reminded me on it and I thought, oh okay, yeah. I said worst thing in my life, which <laughs> worst, yeah, to be honest. So that's one of them. One of the um, yeah, one of them. Yeah. Okay. Hi, James Pierce from The Athletic. Uh, Jürgen, can I just check? Uh, Diogo Jota obviously wasn't involved the, the other night. Is, is he back in contention for tomorrow night? Is there anyone else who won't be involved who's carrying any knocks? And, and uh, do you see it as a chance to maybe step up minutes, maybe 45 rather than 30 for a lot of the lads? Yeah, for some. So Diogo, so lucky. Yeah? So Diogo was not involved because of the injury he got in, um, in the end of the season, of his season. Um, trained yesterday fully. And got injured again, so that's really not cool. We have, but we have to wait for the results yet. We, 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 we had a further assessment this morning, so we have we have to see. Um, Ali was not one hundred percent finished the session earlier, just up or during the warming up, felt something. So out there we have as well to wait. Um, I think pretty much all the others are. Fine. Um, so that's it. And yeah, some might get 45 minutes tomorrow. We have we have to see. But again, it's a it's a period of the year where we have to be really careful with with different things. And um, footballers are these are our, our only boys we have. We have a lot of them, but we have these are the only ones we have. And so we have to take care that we bring them in the best possible situation for the whole season. We will we will we will see. We will, we yeah, so the same region. Yeah. Yep. Sus. Hi, uh, Jürgen Cezali from The Straits Times. Welcome to Singapore. Thank you. Um, over the last few days, we've actually asked uh, a lot of Liverpool fans in Singapore who they are most excited to see, uh, who they are most looking forward to. And most of the answers have been Jürgen Klopp, not <laughs> Mo Salah, not Andy <laughs> Robson or, or anybody else. They Does should that surprise? see me play once. Then. So <laughs> <laughs> How, how does that uh, make you feel? And are you surprised by by that? Uh, yeah, thank you very much, first and foremost, for that. Um, it was never my aim to be um, in the middle of interest in these in these kind of situations. I'm the biggest fan and the biggest supporter of my of uh, support of my own of my football team. So I admire them so much, and I think each and every single player of them would deserve um, to to receive. The maximum love or attention, if you want. Uh, but I realize when I step out of the hotel that uh, the, the noise changed slightly. Uh, and yeah, it's nice to be honest. It's 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 in this in this business. Meanwhile, it's like that because of the, you are the manager of a really good football team, and uh, my face is more often in on the camera than probably other faces. And I don't run while the camera is at me, <laughs> so people can really recognize me. And um, yeah. That's it. It's it's nice, but it was never my my aim that this would happen. Yep, up there. Uh, good evening, Jürgen. Um, Irvin from Sport Plus. So, um, I think many fans and pundits alike have identified Liverpool central midfield as an area that can be improved on. Uh, obviously, you guys signed Fabio Cavallo, and you have the likes of Tyler Morton in the academy coming up. But is that an area where Liverpool will be looking to strengthen in the market before it closes? Now, how is that? If, if nobody wants to leave, but no player came to me with that request yet, um, and I don't expect it really, to be honest. Um, there's no need for a new midfielder. We cannot just add on midfielders. We respect the contracts with our boys um, as well. That means as long as we, we sign them, they, have, they, they get all our support in training and um, between the sessions and during the games and between the games and these kind of things. And um, I, that's that's the that's the situation, and we have really we can count our midfielders. And for me, Harvey Elliott is a is a, a new signing as well after last season. How he started and all these kind of things, and then he's very young and came back brilliant, and then had a little low. That's completely normal after that being that long out. 
Um, so really excited about seeing him. And if you go through um, the, the the quality of the players we have, is is really is really high. And people make one mistake: they don't they underestimate the chance that a player who didn't play the, his best season last year might play the best season this year. And we give it's like football fans. I'm not sure all, but some don't give people the chance to improve. It's like he didn't play last well last year, so he cannot score goals, he cannot do that, so get him out of the house. Um, thank God I'm not like this. So I, I judge potential as much as the last season. Actually, last season not really, it's not really interesting. It's gone. So it's about what when a player didn't perform on his highest level, it's at least at least 50% my fault. So I have to improve, I have to say the right things, I have to, to say better things, I have to help him in a better way, because it's not about the potential of these players, the players and that's uh, incredibly high. It's about bring it on the pitch, and why should we um, stop that after a year where we are nearly won four trophies? I know we didn't, but we were as close as somehow possible. That's the reason. So I said, if, if these boys want to stay, they will stay, and then we will work with that. Thank you, Ivan. You're welcome. Yep. Okay. This way. Hi again, Gabriel from ESPN again. Again, um, great to have you in Singapore. Obviously, preseason at a time where there's new signings, a lot of excitement, a lot of, I guess, expectation over new signings as well. I think Darwin Nunes, everyone's looking forward um, with that big price tag as well. Um, I think there's been a bit of premature and unfair reaction on his first first outing. Um, how much do you think there will be that pressure with that huge price tag? But as a club, as a manager, how much do you also want to, I guess, protect him from this external pressure with the media and all, knowing that he will, uh, he might take time to succeed, but he will get there eventually? I'm not worried at all. So the, the, the general judgment is absolutely nil point nil interesting. So um, and it will be like this, and we all know it. it's it's kind of a game, like a joke or a game for some people to to pick out some situations where a, a player is not doing well. The only real important thing is first and foremost how I judge the situation. For, it's important for the player, and I couldn't be more calm about it. I'm completely convinced about his um, his potential, um, and actually what our people think. So the, the Liverpool support and the whole world. So and they should know now after a while that new players need time and get time. And we should be the first, all Liverpool supporters on this planet, the first one who just del delete the, the fee we paid. Just delete it. It's not important. Now a boy from us, and now we do absolutely everything to not only see the things we saw from him in at, at Benfica. No, from there we go. This is the basis. And again, it's my responsibility to help Darwin that he can fulfill his, his full potential. And... Um, I'm in it. I'm I, I, I'm in that responsibility, and I'm completely calm. I know with strikers it's like this: he missed a chance, and then we have these kind of nervous people out there. Oh my God, he missed a chance! I can promise he will not be the last for no strike in the world. Um, he will be he will there will miss chances. That's how it is. Having them is good, and from there we go. So um, again. That's only a game from, from I think, a little bit from, from other clubs, stuff like this, which normal supporters of other clubs, that's what, what our fans probably do with, with signings of Manchester United and stuff like this. But we cannot take that first. We cannot take that serious. So I think really with half of a football brain, you don't, don't doubt the potential of Darwin Nunez. And now we have to help him that he can fulfill it as quick as possible. That's all. Okay, guys, uh, Jürgen's got to get to training. So one more question, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, yeah, good. Marcus from One Football. Uh, can I ask you about uh, Taki Minimino, who's joined AS Monaco? How do you think he'll fare in League One, and how would you describe his time at Liverpool? Yes, he will succeed in League One. I, I wish him all the best. It's um, we miss him, honestly. It's uh, he was fantastic. He is a fantastic player, and he was a fantastic part of our squad, and. Um, we should not forget that as an offensive player coming to Liverpool in a time when the front, the settled front three were Mane, Firmino, Salah, the new signing was Diogo Jota. It's not like that you have to be a bad player to not be in the first lineup. 
no, you have to be a world class player to be around and to be the next one coming on and stuff like this. So Taki did incredibly well for us, and um, I would have loved to keep him. But I understand 100% that he wants to play more often and more regular. That's absolutely right from his point of view, 100%. And so we wish him all the best. He, we can easily say we wouldn't have won one trophy if Taki Minamino wouldn't have been with us last year. He scored all the, the decisive goals um, to get us to the final. So um, I know that he sees his time, that he enjoyed his time at Liverpool. But of course, he wanted to play more, and that might make sense to to, to move on and go to Monaco in this case, which is a, a super club for him. Um, and I'm really convinced that he will do it incredibly well. Jürgen, thank you very much. You're okay, everyone. welcome. Thank you.